Hey everyone, I've been working on moving my live show setup over to the Sensory Percussion plugin. Before the Sensory Percussion plugin, I was sending MIDI over an IAC bus into Ableton Live for everything. But now that we have Sensory as a plugin, it makes it less cumbersome to integrate Sensory with Ableton Live stuff, so it's totally worth it to me to make the switch. I decided to dig out my very first full song I made with Sensory Percussion and see what I could do with this new workflow. This song is entitled Through. If you happen to find a tutorial that I made for how I set this song up using the Sensory Percussion standalone software, there's some good stuff in there, but just keep in mind that there's a lot of new features now to make it, to make it a lot easier to do some of those tricks. So bear that in mind if you do watch that. This song has had multiple renditions. At first, I was just using Sensory Percussion standalone. Then I was using just Ableton and sensory percussion via the IAC bus, like I mentioned before. My latest philosophy is to use sensory percussion and the native sampler for all of the, my drum sounds, and then to use Ableton Live via MIDI to play all my melodic stuff. So here you can see I have some pretty basic, a, a pretty simple setup with different drum sounds, and there's some controllers. For things that make sense, I didn't go too crazy with anything, but I'm also sending just a few CCs out and I have them all on drum one here. So I'm only using three CCs in this section, and let's see, oh, only one CC there, and one CC there. I'm really happy about this because CCs are hard to keep track of, and if you have a lot, it gets, it can be easy to uh, like get confused with all of your routing over here, and this list can get super long. But I feel like this is really cutting down to what is essential, and. For comparison, with my old live set, I had no fewer than 12 CCs going on at any one time, and that's just kind of ridiculous. If you have my template, this should be pretty familiar. Pretty much everything we're seeing here, sensor input for the sensors, uh, automatic kit switching so by sending MIDI to the sensory percussion plugin, and I'm only using three kits, which we saw in the plugin. That's for each different different parts of the song. Uh, this is a sensory percussion plugin. This is the necessary MIDI track to get sensory percussion MIDI into the IAC bus so we can MIDI map to parameters within Ableton. This folder has uh, individual MIDI tracks per drum. These are just sequences for Tom1 uh, using my MIDI sample and hold devices, which we'll talk about in a minute. The general idea here is that I have one track per drum and then if need be, I have different instruments for different sections of the song that I've split up using the chain selector. You can see on Tom 1, I have a couple different instruments um, parsed out in the same way using the chain selector. And Tom 2 has two instruments as well using the chain selector to select them. This last chain here is just a Max for Live device that I made for choking across channels in Ableton uh, with this new hybrid setup using some stuff within sensory percussion and some stuff within Ableton. I really missed the really, really easy workflow of assigning choke groups uh, across drum channels. And I wanted to do that using Ableton Live. So I made this, I made a suite of devices. You could see one choke is here. And I think there's another on the snare drum. Yeah. Um, this is for this these A sections. I have some pretty gnarly, um, gnarly in the sense that they take up a lot of sonic real estate. They're just really long um, samples of piano with tons of reverb, and it's like 15 seconds long. And that's kind of the core thing in the song for some sections, and I wanted to be able to give it some space. So, uh, for instance, one of those choke groups is on the snare stick shot. So when I do a stick shot, it will cut off the piano sample. If you want to know more about how that's made, I made a really quick video explaining how that works, and I'll put a link in the description for that. As far as sequencing pitch, I use two different approaches in this. Um, in this case, with this, these big chords that we just talked about, I'm using this MIDI pitch effect and a clip envelope 
to transpose the pitch across time for a nice little chord progression. I think that's a pretty effective way to create a sequence when things are pretty simple. However, this is really cumbersome to try to make an envelope like this using your mouse and tons of little dots when the sequence is more involved. For instance, on the tom, I have some nice little runs that I got attached to with one of the older versions of this song. And so I decided to use my MIDI sample and hold technique. Uh, so that's what these extra clips are for. I have, I, it's a lot easier to just plunk out the melody that I want on a piano roll and then send that MIDI over to the channel using one of the receiving pitch in MIDI sample and hold devices. So I have another video explaining how these work, but the idea is that it's just going to cycle any currently active MIDI notes. And for this particular section that we just looked at, there isn't really any overlap. So it's just going to play whatever the last MIDI note was. So I tried to be pretty choosy about what CCs to pipe over from sensory percussion. As we mentioned earlier, I'm only using three total, which is unprecedented for me. One is using a speed controller to throw open the LFO on these big chord samples. So when I'm playing these on the floor tom, if I do a buzz, you can see that CC2 is mapped to this macro, which is just opening up the LFO amount that goes to pitch. Just a nice little subtle effect that I think helps a lot. Otherwise, I'm using velocity and center to edge on Tom 1 with these other CCs to control uh, the volume of diff two different voices and the panning of the two different voices down here. I'm trying to get better about utilizing velocity where there's built-in ways to harness it within live devices just to make things more concise. For instance, there's a velocity to volume control here. But another one that's a little more exciting is using the CV Tools envelope, which scales with velocity. And I know the sensory percussion envelope does this too, but I'm ultimately using this within Ableton. So to save time, I'm just using the CV Tools envelope. With velocity enabled, this envelope will scale. Um, and in this case, I'm using only the hardest hits to trigger an envelope. And I'm mapping this envelope to the depth of another CV Tools object over here. Um, this is a CV LFO set to random. And currently the depth is down, but that's what we're controlling from the snare. So when I play harder, it opens that envelope, which you can see on the knob, and it's just letting some of that random through. And I've mapped that to the gain knob on this utility object, which is right here, which will just drop the volume a tiny bit, uh, creating these little like dropouts because I'm always trying to make disintegrating tape vibe stuff. That's on these chord samples again. So when I play hard, soft, nothing happens. And as I play harder, it kind of fizzles out a little bit. Just an interesting detail. Regarding the overarching structure of the song, I'm using clips to advance scenes automatically. Um, these just have MIDI, single MIDI notes in them, and I've MIDI mapped them to the launch the next scene. Depending on the length of this clip, that determines the length of that section of the song, which I have labeled over here. While it's totally possible to navigate sections of your song manually using uh, all the controls we have with sensory percussion, in this case, I prefer to just have that set to be automatic because to me, there's nothing all that expressive about changing sections of a song. You do give up some flexibility in improvising, but I can improvise within this greater container that I've made for myself. Each one of these scenes selects the relevant kit and sensory percussion. And as we mentioned before, 
uh, we'll select the appropriate chain or sequence or other settings that we can control using the envelopes and the clips. This, I really like using session view for song arrangement and performance because this setup is really quite compact when you close folders. And then I could put this entire thing in a folder and it makes it really easy to uh, create a whole set of songs with different, completely different setups for each song. That's something we'll go over in a future video. For the case of recording, I've set up, I, I went ahead and set up these tracks uh, with individual audio output from each drum channel and sensory percussion and uh, each instrument in Ableton Live. I prefer, when I'm recording, I prefer to just go ahead and record audio stems of each instrument because having the MIDI still available is just way too much option anxiety for me. Speaking of recording, let's go ahead and track this thing. Thanks for watching. Hit me up with any questions. See you later. Thank you.